Hey guys, it's Max. Today, we're gonna compare these flagship phones in terms of photo quality and crown one of them as the all-around king. During these tests, we found strengths in each one of these phones. Some were honestly quite shocking and also some consistent disappointments in certain areas. So stick around and let's take a look at a wide variety of images and then I'll share a summary at the end with some surprising findings. Let's start off with Pike's Place Market and the sign looks best on 11 Pro mainly because it is brighter. I took a shot of one of their awesome bouquets here here, and the iPhone 11 Pro actually managed to get the white balance correct of the paper. We had warm lighting inside, but my preference is a Note 10 shot because of the, the contrast and the sharpness of the flowers. Here is a macro shot of one of the flowers, and the iPhone has a lot more fine detail on the paper, but I prefer the Pixel 4's white balance and brighter look. In this shot of the Space Needle, I zoomed in as much as I could with each phone, and as you could tell, the Pixel 4 only zoomed in 8 times instead of 10 like the others, but even if I digitally crop in, the Pixel 4 still has more detail and the clouds look natural compared to a little bit artifacty on the 11 Pro and with a ton of artifacts and fake blue sky that it added in on the Note. Now we have some shots of downtown and these all look great. I would say the 11 Pro looks the best, the most natural in terms of colors and exposure and then if we crop in the 11 Pro is actually more detailed as well the Note 10 does have dual aperture with 2.4 uh, f-stop to add more detail for these kind of shots but looks like software makes up for it with the iPhone this was an excellent time to have an ultra wide and unfortunately the pixel does not have one and from the other two I would choose the note because it looks a little bit more detailed and for the last one this is an eight time zoom with all of them that is the most the pixel 4 will do and here the pixel 4 has the best shot. It doesn't have the artifacting of the iPhone 11 Pro or the over sharpening of the Note 10. It has a nice good looking zoomed in image. As we were walking we saw this awesome new building being built and unfortunately the Pixel 4 does not have the ultra wide so I couldn't capture that uh, but between the iPhone and the Note, the Note definitely looks better in terms of exposure and definitely more detail with its 16 megapixel ultra wide. I took a portrait mode shot here to test out edge detection. This is a kind of a difficult scene and both the Pixel and the Note did a fantastic job with edge detection. The Note being the best in my opinion but the iPhone totally failed us and this is something we see again and again in these kind of situations. Here's a telephoto shot with a bunch of detail and some nice colors. The Note 10 Plus goes a little bit crazy on the saturation and a little bit higher on the contrast, whereas the Pixel 4 looks bland, kind of like last year's iPhone XS, with the 11 Pro not only having a nice balance of colors and contrast, but also if we pop in, we see way more detail, dramatically more, and that is because of deep fusion. In this standard shot, I really like the Pixel 4's colors and contrast. It matched the kind of a overcast scene the best to real life. And then I also went ahead and zoomed in as much as I could to capture the other side of the water. And once again, when you zoom in as much as you can, the Pixel 4 just does the best job. Shooting up on the pass, the 11 Pro looks nice, bright, contrasty, and the white balance is spot on for the snow. The Pixel 4 lacks a bit of contrast and colors, whereas the Note, the white balance is totally off and it's a bit oversaturated, so it looks kind of crazy. And flipping around, uh, I took a shot of my car here and the Note 10 either got some flaring or something on the lens there. Uh, and then the white balance is once again really off, whereas the Pixel 4 and iPhone look quite similar, but I like the extra brightness of the iPhone. I decided to take a portrait mode shot, and the Pixel 4's looks definitely the best with the least distortion. That is because it uses the standard lens and digitally crops in 1.5 times to take this, giving us a better perspective, whereas the other two, the wide lens gives us distortion, whereas the telephoto portrait shots, we won't be able to take a full car photo with. It. Now this shot here was absolutely crazy with a huge difference in terms of colors, you know, contrast, and quality. Now this was the perfect scenario for a portrait shot with a regular camera. It was bright outside but not too bright, we're underneath a tree so we have nice horizontal lighting and the Pixel 4 looks absolutely terrible. Uh, the white balance is completely off, the detail looks really really poor. Uh, that's because there's a lot of detail in the scene and it's digitally cropped 
cropping on a standard lens, so it's not really capturing 12 megapixels, uh, half of that basically, compared to the other two, which they are. Now, if we go ahead and crop in, we see a massive difference in detail. The Note 10 is better than the Pixel 4, with the white balance being accurate, a little bit of like a salmon-y in the skin, whereas 11 Pro is too warm, but the difference in detail is massive on the jacket, on the shirt. We actually see the buttons, we see the fine details in the jacket. Uh, it is incredible, and that is probably because of Deep Fusion taking all the different stills and combining them. This looks more like a DSLR style shot. Now the other crazy thing is the difference in file size. The iPhone, it's also shooting JPEGs, but it is the smallest with way more detail, whereas the Note 10 has a massive 15 megabytes of file size, which is gonna just eat up your storage, especially if you wanna to upload to the cloud your data as well. This shot here is extremely tough. We have the sun coming out, but it's still overcast. It is really dark and contrasty. Um, I would say the Note 10s looks the best. I like that um, the concrete here was brighter. It kind of brings the image out more, but none of them really look great. Now it's time to compare panoramas. Here is the Pixel 4s. Here is the iPhones, and here is the Notes. Uh, now, uh, you might be able to tell that the Pixels 4 just looks very dark, that the dynamic range doesn't look good, and it's way over sharpened. And then if we go ahead and crop in on the left hand side, uh, we see that the Note 10 has the most detail, uh, the iPhone's a little bit brighter, and uh, the Pixel 4 just looks really bad. If we look at the opposite side, the iPhone was able to capture the dynamic range of the clouds uh, way better than Note 10, which is all blown out, and the Pixel 4, which is not only blown out, but also super, super soft. Now time for some selfies. This one is in lower light, and I like the fact that the Note 10 Plus brightens up the faces and makes it look just more pleasing overall. And the same thing goes for this outside selfie. Not only did the Note uh, do a really good job on the edge detection, but it also has a nice balance between contrast and colors. Uh, it does do a little bit of skin smoothing, even with that turned off, which is kind of annoying. The iPhones looks the worst overall in every single way, and it's also cropped in more because you can't take wider portraits like you can with the other two. This shot of my wife is pretty much an impossible shot because this gate has so much uh, different holes in it that the phone has to cut out. The iPhone looks the worst. Uh, the Pixel 4 is better but still pretty bad with edge detection and Samsung definitely does the best job with edge detection of random objects. Taking a shot of my fancy breakfast, the Note 10's food shot here looks the most appealing. It automatically recognizes what it was and uh, optimized add a little bit extra sharpening and contrast and it looks the most appetizing. Now in this latte shot it also recognized it and made it nice and bright but we also lose out on some of the details in the actual latte art so I would go for the Pixel 4 for this shot. In this shot the iPhone is the only one to get the white balance spot on and the color of the wood paneling and along with that the Pixel 4 has this kind of artifacting that is showing up in the shadow areas. In this portrait shot I brought up the shadows a little bit just like you were editing a photo those a little bit too dark and once again we see all that artifacting and the noise that shows up in the Pixel 4 shadows for some reason uh, that is noticeable in the notes and the iPhones but the iPhone looks the cleanest by far and the note is pretty good too now another thing that you notice is that the Pixel 4 is way more cropped in that is because if you're shooting portrait shots you cannot shoot at the standard lens width it has to be cropped in at least 1.5 times now let's look at some more food shots for this first one the the Note 10 just didn't focus on it, whereas the iPhone 11 looks like the best balance with more detail. For the second shot here, the iPhone 11 Pro has the most true to life white balance, but it doesn't mean it looks the best. The best one is the Pixel 4s, and the Note 10 is just over sharpened. For this last one, I'm going to give the win to the iPhone. The Pixel 4 is oversaturated and a little bit too bright, with a lot of compression artifacts at the top of the image. Now we have this Lambo in this underground garage, and only the iPhone managed to get the white balance correct. Let's finish off this comparison with night mode shots and here we have this nightscape and I love that the 11 Pro still makes it look like it is a nighttime scene. We have really good contrast, we have good colors, we have really good sharpness, whereas the Pixel and the Note make it look too bright, almost unrealistic, too HDR'd, and the Pixel has all this artifacting, especially in the sky. Here's a shot with the telephoto lens and the Note 10 tries to compensate for its lack of detail with extra sharpening but it just doesn't look good and it still looks too
too bright. The Pixel 4 has a really good looking image, but the iPhones has more contrast and more detail. So that's the one I would choose. The iPhone 11 cannot do night mode photos with a front facing camera. That's why it looks the worst here, whereas the Pixel 4 looks the best. The Pixel also looks the best for the standard night mode shot of myself. And then we decided to test out the flash because yes, we still have flashes and they all look pretty terrible. If I had to choose one, I would probably choose the pixels, but I would have to change the white balance. Uh, the notes looks the most accurate, but it also has low contrast and the iPhone's flash is just too bright. All of these phones do a fantastic job overall. The Note 10 Plus has the most features built in with great edge detection, but the worst overall image quality. The iPhone is very natural and balanced with the best overall image quality, but edge detection is still quite poor. The shots where deep fusion was in effect look shockingly good, and the overall file sizes are half of the others, saving you space as well as mobile data. The best thing about the Pixel 4 is its 16 megapixel telephoto lens, which most of its wins were shot with. But for some dumb reason, Google doesn't use it for portrait shots, making those lack detail, and they're also limited to 1.5x crop. I would personally prefer an ultra wide camera since you can always crop into a photo, but you can't always back up enough or to get cool perspectives like these. Surprisingly, Google is still using the same 2016 sensor that is inside of the Pixel 3 and 3a. Maybe that's why shadow noise is an issue. Photos have gotten better, but that's all software related, so I really hope that the Pixel 3 and 3a get updated to achieve the same final quality. We were really expecting a bit more from the Pixel 4, and if you agree, let us know down in the comments section below. We think that the iPhone 11 is the overall photo king, and if you want to see our video quality comparison, click that button above to subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.